Hello my friends, today we will continue to the farms in the United States to see how the harvest of thousands of tons of vegetables and fruits happens here in the 2022 crop. And in the later part of the video, we'll go to some US waters to see how the fishing of certain species happens. According to USDA forecasts, due to the impact of climate change, agricultural production in 2022 in the United States could be reduced by about 7% compared to 2021. However, for many fruit and vegetable farms on a large scale, the 2022 crop is still considered a bountiful harvest. The first place we will visit is a sweet potato farm in Johnston County, North Carolina. The end of August to November is when about 5,000 workers flock to sweet potato farms in North Carolina to harvest and about 35% of them are illegal immigrant workers. The harvest worker's job is to pick up the sweet potatoes and fill these small buckets. Next, the sweet potatoes will be loaded onto the truck and for every bucket of sweet potatoes, these workers will receive a small cart to receive money at the end of the day. In recent years, the production of sweet potatoes harvested in North Carolina has always exceeded the production of sweet potatoes in any other state in the country. According to statistics, in 2021, the sweet potato growing area in North Carolina is about 46,000 acres and the yield is about 771,000 tonnes, accounting for 43% of the country's sweet potato production. In addition to North Carolina, California and Mississippi, there are also two states with large sweet potato growing areas in the United States. We are currently at a table grape farm in California. Every August to November is the time when tens of thousands of workers flock to California's grape farms to harvest. California's vineyards are also home to the largest number of migrant workers in the country. It is estimated that more than 93,000 immigrant workers work on vineyards in California each year. Billions of grapes will be cut and those that do not qualify will be discarded before packaging can take place. At this farm, the amount of grapes that are dropped and discarded during the harvest is about 17 to 20%. For those who like to eat grapes, this is a huge amount of grapes wasted. According to a USDA report in 2021, the total area under viticulture in California is about 900,000 acres, accounting for 95% of the country's grape growing area. Annually, the state also produces about 5.9 million tons of grapes with a value of $5.2 billion. Not only is it the state with the largest fresh grape production in the country, California is also a state with raisin production, accounting for 98% of the nation's production. third place we will visit in this video is a cherry farm in Washington. Between April and the end of July every year is the time when about 21,000 workers flock to cherry farms across the country to harvest. Currently, the United States has about 115,000 acres of land used to grow cherries mainly in states like Washington, California, Michigan, and Oregon. Although they are often labeled simply as cherries at the grocery store, there are more than 
1,000 different varieties of cherries grown in the United States. Billions of cherries we picked and placed in those plastic buckets. And for each bucket filled with cherries, a worker here will receive a salary of $4. On average, they earn about $70 to $90 a day after eight hours of work. According to statistics in 2021, cherry production in the United States is 266,000 tons and brings in a value of $523 million. Washington is the leading state in the country in terms of cherry production with about 164,000 tons, followed by California with 59,000 tons and Oregon with 43,000 tons. Once harvested, billions of cherries are sent to the factory to be packaged and processed into other products such as canned cherries or juice. Next, we will go to a broccoli farm in California to see how the process of harvesting tens of tons of broccoli happens here. Currently in California, 119,000 acres of land is used to grow broccoli, accounting for 90% of the country's broccoli growing area. Broccoli is harvested on all farms in the United States by hand because there are no harvesters currently available for this vegetable. These workers will cut the broccoli and fill the bucket they carry behind their backs. Every year, about 4,000 workers come to California to work on broccoli farms. After the buckets are loaded, the broccoli is poured into plastic trays and sent to the factory for packaging. This is what happens at a packaging plant. Here, broccoli will be sorted by size and packaging will also depend on the order. Next, we will go to the waters of Alaska to see how the process of catching thousands of halibut works. Initially, this farmer would hook the bait to the fishing line and release them into the sea. Each hook will be spaced about five to six feet apart, and in each drop, about 300 hooks will be used. And this is what they receive after about two hours after the hooks were released into the sea. About 4.7 million pounds of halibut are caught each year in Alaska, and most of the halibut fishing is done by individual small boats. Once caught, this fisherman will use a knife to kill the flounder before transferring them to the boat's tank. The last place we will visit in this video is the waters of Louisiana. Here, hundreds of tons of oysters will be harvested to move to a new farming site. For many years now, Louisiana has always been the state with the largest oyster production in the country. The annual production of oysters harvested in this state accounts for about 63% of the national production. After these oysters have been harvested, they will be transferred to other boats and they will be continually raised to the new waters for about a year before being officially exported. This is how these fishermen transfer all of their newly purchased oysters into the waters under their jurisdiction. It takes about two hours to transfer all the oysters on this boat to the sea.
Hello my friends, today we are going to the farms and national parks of the United States to see how the millions of deer here are raised. According to statistics, in 2021, the number of wild deer and deer raised on farms in the United States is about 36.7 million. Currently, due to a large area of agricultural land being abandoned and the younger generation not interested in hunting, the number of deer in the US has increased sharply over the years. Currently, there are 17 different deer breeds in the United States, and the most popular ones include the white-tailed deer, mule deer, reindeer, and the moose. It is estimated that each year about 12 million deer are born in the United States. Each female deer usually leaves one to three young, but most commonly two. This is the breeding process of a white-tailed deer farm in Texas. After an hour of birth, three baby deer were born and they were able to stand up on their own immediately after birth. Currently, Texas is the state with the largest number of deer farms in the country, with about 975 farms. In addition, this is also the state with the largest number of wild deer, with about 5.3 million. This accounts for 15% of the deer population of the country. Newborn stags weigh an average of six to eight pounds. In the wild, they are considered the favorite prey of predators such as coyotes, brown bears, and wildcats. After two days or so, the young deer will be accompanied by their mother to the fields to play. And for the first two weeks of life, their food is entirely mother's milk. These are deer on a farm in Oklahoma. The baby deers here start grazing when they reach three weeks of age, but cycling is continued until the baby deer reach four months of age. Currently, there are 223 licensed deer farms in Oklahoma, and the number of deer in the state is about 12 million. White-tailed deer are considered fully mature when they are 16 to 22 months old. At this point, the average male weight is about 175 pounds, and the female's weight is 125 pounds. Every day, deer usually spend only three hours foraging and the rest of the time they spend playing and sleeping. Most deer usually only feed in the early morning and late afternoon. Each day, an adult deer will need to eat about 10 to 15 pounds of food, the equivalent of 7% of their body weight. This is a herd of wild deer in the town of Rangeli, Maine. In winter, when the lawns are covered with snow, animal lovers here will use corn to feed hundreds of wild deer. Without this amount of free food, it is very likely that large numbers of deer here could have died from lack of food. Not only are there hundreds of deer here, this free food party is also where wild turkeys like to visit. In the wild, wild deer usually live in herds of 10 to 30 animals. Each herd usually has three to five males, in which the leader will be the strongest male and it is responsible for leading the herd to the feeding sites 
and warning when there is danger. Sometimes we can come across a large herd of deer with hundreds of them feeding together. This is essentially a combination of many small herds and they will separate after feeding. In the United States, the mating season of deer usually lasts from September to February of the following year, depending on the species. However, mid-October is usually the busiest time of the mating season. At this time, the males in the herd will fight with each other for the right to mate with the females. This is also the time when the leading stags are easily robbed of their throne if they are not strong enough to win the battles. The prize for the winner is to mate with all of the female deer in the herd and even the female deer of other herds living nearby. In addition, the most important thing is that the winner will take the top position and have the obedience of other members of the herd. For farm raised deer, they don't need to fight any other males for the right to mate. Instead, the ranchers will decide this. Here's what's going on at a deer farm in Mississippi. These two women will separate the two deer from the herd and proceed to cut their horns to prevent other attacks on other deer in the herd. Today, Mississippi has one of the largest deer populations in the country, with about 2.3 million deer, and 57% of them are living in national parks and wildlife reserves. In addition to feeding freely on the lawns, farm-raised deer also regularly eat other foods such as corn and grain. These are deer raised on a farm in Missouri. Today, Missouri is home to 1.7 million deer and around 53% of them are wild deer. Wild deer hunting is a licensed activity in the United States. Here, you need to buy a shooting license and only hunt a limited number of deer. According to statistics in 2020, in the United States, there are 11.4 million licensed deer hunters, of which 9.4 million are hunting deer with guns and bows. The remaining 2 million are only licensed to hunt deer with bows. Every year, about 6.3 million deer are hunted in the United States. This is only half the number of deer born each year. Therefore, the number of deer present in the country is still increasing rapidly.